Hi guys, this is App Unwrapper. I'm back with Assemble with Care. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get through chapter 7 and 8. Enjoy! It was the day before the festival and the whole town was busy getting ready. I had more work than I knew what to do with. When Joseph called with another job, I was craving the cool quiet of his and Izzy's seafront house. I barely reached their front door when I heard someone calling me. Psst. Maria, I need your help. Quickly! It's top secret! It was Izzy, peeking out from the side of the house. She beckoned for me to follow her. She led me through to a beautiful, unruly garden, overflowing with flowers of every color. Nestled among them was a playhouse, its doorway almost completely obscured by a towering rose bush. You have to squeeze past it and breathe in real small, like this. Izzy took in a big gulp of air and crawled through the gap and into the playhouse. I hadn't planned on crawling in the dirt today, but the life of a repair woman never did run smooth. On the table inside, there was an electronic toy. Not exactly the usual stock in my parents' antique shop. I uh, had an accident. I didn't do it on purpose or anything, but it won't turn on anymore. Can you fix it for me? Do grown-ups play games as well? Can you show me how to play? I tried before, but it was so hard. Her toy fixed, I watched Izzy retreat into its screen, taking refuge in a three-inch world of her own. Well, I'd better head inside. Your dad is waiting for me. Please don't tell him about the game. He'll think I broke it on purpose. Why would he think that? Because, uh, well, I kind of dropped it really hard at the wall. Izzy looked down, scuffing her shoes on the worn floor of the playhouse. My dad said I have to go to this stupid festival tomorrow and put on a stupid dress, and I don't want to. All he cares about is working. He never wants to see me unless it's for his job. I'm not going. He can't make me. With that, Izzy dove back through the rose bush and disappeared into the wilds of the garden. She was so young. She couldn't be expected to see that her dad was struggling too. 
It made me think. Had I really tried hard enough to understand my parents' point of view? I was so focused on the adventures ahead of me, maybe I didn't care enough about leaving them behind. Leaving Izzy hiding in the garden, I walked around to the front of the house and rang the doorbell. It was only then I noticed my favorite overalls covered in grass stains. I scrubbed desperately, but it was too late. Maria, what are you doing? What happened to your clothes? I was uh, repairing a lawn mower. How unusual. Well, do come in. The job I've got for you is a little more delicate. Totally embarrassed, I walked into an orderly room filled with papers and ledgers. So this was his office. You must be so busy getting ready for the festival. Are you looking forward to it? Of course. It's traditional for the mayor to judge food from every cafe and restaurant in town. I'll be declaring the best chef in Bella Riva by this time tomorrow. Speaking of which... He unclipped the watch from his wrist and very carefully handed it to me. I'll have a tight schedule to follow, but my watch stopped working a while ago. Could you see if you can make it tick again? The main plate has completely cracked. I'll need to replace it. The cogs look good, though. If I'm careful, I can reuse those. Are you sure it will all fit back together? I've not gone a day without this watch since my wife gave it to me. As I handed the watch back to Joseph, my fingers traced over the engraving on the back. I hoped fixing this was one small way I could help him move forward. I can't believe it's working, Maria. Thank you. My wife was a brilliant woman. Feeling this ticking on my wrist, it makes me feel like she's still here. Watches measure minutes and hours like they're infinite. 
I didn't know we had so little time. <laughs> Even with Isabel, I barely see her. And when I do, she acts like she hates me. Just then, the phone rang. Even when he was at home, his work was never done. Uh, sorry, Maria. I have to take this. I'll see you at the festival tomorrow. As I left, I turned and saw him pacing the floor of his office, his watch glinting in the afternoon sun. I hoped its quiet ticking would at least bring him some peace during the busy days to come. All right, so that's chapter seven and eight. I'll be back with chapter nine in the next video. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks, bye-bye.